Sony Photographer. In this video I'm going to be talking about the web development programming experience on an MSI GS63 VR. So far the videos about the MSI GS63 VR has turned into a series, so if you want to see other videos about this laptop, uh, you can check out this playlist in the info card. So what do I mean by web development or programming experience on this laptop? What I mean is I'll explain how easy it was to set up a working environment and to see how reliable the machine is. Also what benefits it provides over other machines and if any of the cool features that the MSI put into this laptop. I also want to talk about if any of the features MSI added to this laptop bring any benefits to a professional environment. I personally have been using Ubuntu at work at my desktop machine for like almost two years and and I'm really used to that setup. But I also used the MacBook Pro at home when I was working from home. And wherever I went, if I went to a conference or if I had some kind of a meeting where I carry a computer with me, I would be using my MacBook Pro. So my MSI GS63 VR took the place of my MacBook Pro. I'm gonna tell you uh, my experience of how this laptop performed in those kinds of environments. Since I bought the Amazon exclusive SKU version, it came only with one drive. It had an M.2 SATA SSD and it was 512 gigs. Uh, by the time I started installing all the games and all the programs, I filled up 70% of the hard disk already. And that's not enough space left over for a dual booting setup. And since it's like a work from home machine, I decided to just set up a VM for now and then just work from a VM. And the experience was actually pretty good. Performance level of a VM compared to Ubuntu where you boot straight from the disk is completely different. Things weren't as smooth, the programs wouldn't build as fast, and I wasn't really taking advantage of the full hardware in the OS. So my options were to either buy a bigger M.2 SSD or buy a secondary drive. So you, by default, MSI puts a, a disk drive in addition to the M.2 SATA SSD. My plans were to replace that hard drive, but since I bought the Amazon exclusive version, the slot for the disk drive was empty, which was awesome news where I didn't have to discard some kind of a hard drive, but the bad news was that there was no case able to connect an additional drive. So I went ahead and ordered a one terabyte SSD and then I ordered a cable from MSI. The cable took two months to come and I made a video about it. You can check it out here. But once it arrived, I created a partition for Ubuntu for about 200 gigs and the rest was just for video games and just video files. 200 gigs is more than enough for just doing programming related stuff. There are some stuff that will take a lot of space. You might have a big database of the server where you use at work. Also things like Android Studios SDK libraries take a lot of space. Also if you're running any virtual machines like Android device emulators, those take a lot of space. So 200 gigs is mostly enough. I have worked on 256 gigs in my office computer and I've never filled it up. I could have given a bigger partition for Ubuntu, but I really wanted to have more space for video files and video games because as you know, those take a lot of space and I'm recording 4k all the time so I have to always you know have lots of space so I've been dual booting for about a month right now and the experience has been great I did have some difficulties and I'm gonna be making a follow-up video to this talking about my difficulties with Ubuntu everything is working pretty stable right now and I'm pretty happy with the performance of the computer since it's my personal machine I use it again mostly for working from home sometimes when I'm at work where I have to present something in the office I have to show something in a meeting having a laptop with a work development environment really helps and the GS63 VR is just amazing at that. Comes with an HDMI port and a mini display port and most of our meeting rooms at my office have an HDMI and a mini display port. I can just plug them right in. I don't need any adapters. But my coworkers with their shiny new Macro Pros, they have to be carrying dongles around. And there were a few moments where some of them forgot their dongles and they didn't realize that they couldn't plug in an HDMI or a display port to a USB Type-C port. So this is a great benefit of the MSI G63 VR that you can just plug your computer anywhere. I mean, except those old school meeting rooms where they have VGA. But honestly, if you're still using VGA, it's not worth it to plug in like a powerful computer because you're not going to be getting any of the benefits of the resolution. The way I dual boot between Ubuntu and Windows is I have my BIOS to pick the Ubuntu partition to boot from. After that, you'll be put into the Grub bootloader. Grub bootloader will give you options whether you want to boot into Ubuntu or you want to have any advanced options. Maybe you want to boot into a different kernel or it gives you an option to boot into the Windows boot manager. I love this feature because if you put your BIOS to boot from Windows, it's not going to give you an option to boot from Ubuntu. At least it didn't give it for me when I first installed it. But this is really useful. If I just want to switch environments, I just reboot and select a different option. And by default, it goes to Ubuntu, which is nice. So some of you might be asking, what if I don't want to install Ubuntu or I don't want to use Ubuntu? Can I do all these things? Can I have a professional working environment in Windows? And I would say, of course you can. Uh, you can do anything in Windows now. Windows comes with Bash on Ubuntu on Windows and that's pretty much based in Ubuntu 16.04. So you can install all the libraries that you use in Ubuntu to develop. Let's say if you're using Rails, Rails has a really good guide online on installing 
rails and all the different tools prerequisites you need to run a rail server locally it even shows you how to install mysql and postgres apparently postgres has some issues i didn't try it yet but i got everything working and there's tons of other libraries that are compatible with windows node.js works excellently npm is fine so you can do a lot of stuff in windows i personally got used to using ubuntu because when i started using it professionally back then windows didn't really have ubuntu bash on it so i didn't really have an option i either had to use linux or mac os so i was just using both but now let's say you just bought a computer you're in college or aspiring professional developer you could definitely use a windows laptop to do like full-on end-to-end development another reason why i choose ubuntu over windows is i like to have a separation because when i'm in windows i have easier access to video games in ubuntu i don't have any video games it's just strictly work if i want to play any video games i have to reboot the computer and that's extra work and it takes time so by using ubuntu strictly i am really focused and my attention is just focused on work and programming. So for the conclusion, this laptop is a great multi-purpose laptop. It does great in professional software development environments. Since I'm dual booting, it boots really fast at both Ubuntu and Windows. The SSDs are really nice and fast. This laptop performs on the par with my desktop computer, which is amazing. And it's also not surprising because I don't do any high CPU or GPU intensive work. On both computers, I have DDR4 RAM and 16 gigs, and I have both super fast SSDs on both computers. So I I haven't had a bottleneck on my computer yet in Ubuntu. When I'm working, I usually have a lot of Chrome tabs open. It's usually Stack Overflow or Medium articles that I should read. It's also Inbox, a lot of like heavy web apps. I also have Slack running all the time. Slack is becoming heavier and heavier every day. It's becoming a resource intensive program because it has so many things going on. And I usually use multiple workspaces. I mentioned this in my video about me switching from Mac OS to Windows. By having multiple workspaces, I can switch between tasks really fast. And this laptop does this great. I can have multiple multiple different workspaces. One could be Rails, one could be Android Studio, one could be Communications, another thing for something else. And it handles all of them really nicely with no lag. And like I mentioned earlier, the extra ports are very nice. You can plug in all the peripherals that you want. It's, you know, mini display port, HDMI, it has USB Type-C. Let's say if your coworkers have a bunch of USB Type-C dongles and you want to reuse them, you can with this laptop. It's really nice. And you get a full gigabit Ethernet port. So if you have a spotty Wi-Fi, you can just connect to the Ethernet. And I also grown into the keyboard a lot and a lot of people complain about the keyboard on this computer it's actually pretty good i've grown on it and i can type really fast on it and it's definitely enjoyable i don't hate typing on it when i'm on the go now i have a mechanical keyboard both at home and at my job so i don't have to use the keyboard as much but sometimes i do when i'm sitting on the couch or sitting in a cafe somewhere working the keyboard is very nice so thanks to ubuntu and open source community my development experience with ubuntu has been really nice and i'm going to talk about my issues in the next video i fixed my biggest issue a few days before making this video so right now everything is working fine and i haven't had any issues yet i've been able to work from home efficiently with this computer and also sometimes if i take it to the office it also does the job and that's it thank you for watching this video please comment below if you had similar experiences where you use your personal machine for work or set up a working development environment definitely comment if you have an msi g62 vr and you went through the same process i want to thank you for watching again i'll see you guys in the next video bye Okay, I started recording. <laughs> Mixing it up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm making sound. Distracting me. I can see you like move from the reflection of the TV. <laughs> the kind of trouble I can. <laughs> can't you just study? <laughs>